Hey, what's up guys? The Raging Shadow here, always known as Tyler, and I am here with my Suicide Squad, the movie review. I just got back from seeing it, and man, I loved it. I'm going to be doing uh, two parts of this video. I'm going to have, the first half is going to be non spoilerish and, and he's going to be, going to go into depth more about the story and the characters and have a whole bunch of spoilers. So, I'll leave a warning up when I do get into the spoiler section if you don't want to be spoiled, but for now I'm just going to talk about why I thought of the movie overall. So, to start off, if you're not familiar with Suicide Squad, it's basically a DC movie where the government takes sorts of secret organization where they take a bunch of villains and make them do good things and in return they'll get time off their sins and they're basically threatening to do it otherwise because their heads will get blown up if they don't do it and they'll die. So, I always love Suicide Squad. Uh, Assault in Arkham is probably one of my favorite uh, anime DC movies ever. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's basically, it's set in the Arkham verse, the Batman Arkham video games, but it's centered around the Suicide Squad, and I think it's a great anime movie, especially if you're trying to get familiar with what all the Suicide Squad is, so go check that out. But as for the actual live-action movie itself, starring Jared Leto, Margaret Robbie, and uh, Will Smith, and a whole bunch of our great actors, it was pretty amazing. Like, early on the past few days, critics have been hating it, and apparently it's gotten, like, a lower score in Rotten Tomatoes than Batman v Superman, and I think that's just downright stupid. I mean, I'm all for people getting their own opinions, but my god, to say it's worse than Batman v Superman, I don't know how you can think of that. But anyway, I thought the movie was amazing. Uh, it had a f bunch of funny moments. It had uh, an interesting story. Uh, as far as the story goes, it could have been better. I mean, it's nothing like... It's nothing that, like, you'll be shocked about towards the end. Like, it doesn't really have that much shock value. So, the story's... Nothing like outstanding, but does like get his job done for an introduction to what the Suicide Squad is. Like I said, all the actors did amazing. The action, uh, the shots, editing, it's all done perfect. I loved it. So, uh, yeah, if that's about what I'm going to do for non spoiler, is go see it. It's an awesome movie. I rate it like 8 out of 10. Like, it is a must see. It's probably DC's best live action. Or, it's our best extended universe movie so far out, Batman v Superman and Man of Steel. I mean, I know it's, there's only three movies, or two other movies to compare it to, but it's by far their best so far. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend you go checking it out, even if you're not familiar with what Suicide Squad is and everything. Heck, if you're just a fan of Harley Quinn or Joker or any of the other villains from Suicide Squad, I would definitely recommend you go checking it out. And you'll get some fan-favorite characters by the end of the movie. So, anyway, on to the spoiler review. So the whole movie takes about the first 30 minutes to, you know, introduce the characters and everything. You know, it takes time to develop Will Smith's character and his daughter. And it takes time to develop Harley Quinn's character and how she met the Joker. And how she turned into Har Harley, or when she was Harley and Quinzel, and then turning into Harley. So it takes time to establish who these characters are and their backstory. And I think it's pretty interesting because with Suicide Squad, it's, you have a whole bunch of villains some are b-listers c-listers and then some like a-listers like killer croc and deadshot and harley Quinn, where you just like but it's good to establish like a backstory for at least a few some of them i think my favorite backstory is probably captain boomerang because you get that uh cameo with uh flash and i think that's that was pretty hilarious it, like it's like i said all the flashbacks established characters pretty well so i give props to that uh I kind of already saw that Slipknot was going to be that throwaway character to make an example of, yeah, hey, they're not king when they're going to blow your heads off. So I called it from the start. He was going to be that character who was going to die as soon as they get went on to their mission. Now, as for their mission, uh, it involves Enchantress. A lot of people, when the movie was announced, thought she was going to be part of Suicide Squad, but she's actually like the antagonist of it. So she's basically like, like every other villain trying to destroy the world or whatever. Like I said, the plot's not too, like, great. I mean, it's just your standard, the villain tries to stop the world. But, I mean, aside from this plot, it's just it's the villains that are actually stopping the villain. So, I mean, they are the Suicide Squad, so it's either that or get their heads blown off. But, yeah, so the plot's nothing too special. Uh, it does bring back her, she does bring back her, like, lost ancient brother, Golem, or Golem, or whatever it was. And... Goliath? I don't know. It was, it was one three. But, uh, he's not really, like, much of, like, a threat in the whole movie. Like, he, like, shows up, causes some havoc, and then, like, he's just, like, sidelined until, like, the end of the movie where you're, like, when they kill him, you're like, oh, yeah, he was part of this. So, yeah. 
Uh, I will say I loved Diab or El Diablo's performance. That was a pretty like he. W I always thought he was gonna be like another throwaway character, but he actually pretty. He actually proved to be pretty useful. You know, he was like he was that one guy on the team that didn't want like fight or anything. You know, he was like he just wanted like go about his life, but you know they kind of forced him into Task Force X. So you know it takes Will Smith to like finally push him like, hey, we need your help. So you know he just starts helping out through the film and then he sacrifices himself towards the end. So yeah, like I said, this movie, it does a really good job getting you attached to the characters. I wanted to hear more from Killer Croc. I wanted to see more of Captain Boomerang. Harley was amazing. What that Will Sh Will Smith as Deadshot was amazing. Uh, I I will say this if I have to say one thing though is that I feel like Will Smith's uh. I I don't I won't say he was like spot on with Deadshot's performance like I feel like I'm 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 not completely familiar with like how Deadshot acts in the comics like I'm just I probably like read like two volumes of Suicide Squad from the New Fifty Two and then I'm just for most part I'm just basing his like attitude and everything from like and his personality from uh, a Sultan Arkham and how he would act compared to how Will Smith's act I would say Will Smith's probably a bit too friendly with everybody like by the end like he and Rick Flagg are like buddy buddies. I'm like, eh, I don't think like Floyd would actually be like all oh, buddy buddy. I mean, he may like soften up a bit. But I, I think for the most part, he's just looking out for himself and his, you know, daughter. Or I think it was a niece in the cartoons or comics or something like that. Either way, it was like, daughter or something like that. But I don't know. I felt like there were times where he was a bit too nice. But other than that, I think he does a great job as Deadshot. And he and. Uh, Margaret Robbie's Harley Quinn on the screen were fantastic together. Now, for the part you're probably wondering about, Jared Leo's Joker. How was he? Was he better than Heath Ledger? I personally find Jack Nicholson better, but, you know, opinions, calm down. But, uh, I can't really judge how I thought he was compared to them. Because he's not on screen a lot. He's on screen for, like, less than ten minutes. And I'm fine with that, first off, because this is a Suicide Squad film. This isn't a joker film or batman film by the way batman's also on, in the movie for like only a minute like like i said again i'm fine with it because this is not a batman movie this is a suicide squad movie so it needs to focus on the story of what's going on with the suicide squad and the characters in the suicide squad so i think it does a good job of minimizing their uh appearances and not like overstaying it with like oh J now joker's the main villain and or he's part of the suicide squad now or whatever so i think they did a good job with that uh, like I said, I can't really judge how Jared Leo did because he's just not on screen enough. So I'll probably have to wait if they do like a director's cut or something because apparently he said a lot of his scenes got cut from the theater release. So maybe I'll have a different opinion when that director's cut comes out and we see those extended scenes. But for like, a, I can't give an opinion. I mean, I for, I think he did a good job. I think he did like he wasn't. I don't want to say he was completely good as Joker sometimes. There were some parts where I felt like he was a little flat or he was, like, forcing it, kind of. Like, sometimes it's, like, he would have that pitch of the Joker where it's like, yeah, that sounds like Joker, but then it would get, like, all dark and, like, he's, like, mumbling and stuff. And it's like, yeah. Same thing with Harley, or Margaret Robbio is, uh, Harley Quinn. Like, for, like, 90% of the time she is Harley Quinn, but there were some parts where I feel like it was forced or just, like, it was, it was something like, I don't want to see Harley Quinn doing that or saying that, so... But yeah, I can't give an opinion with Jared Leo. Like I said, Mark Rabio, mostly, like, 90% of the time, like I said, is perfect as Harley Quinn. So yeah, can't really say much. But other than that, I think it was a fantastic film. Like I said, Enchantress is threatening to blow up the whole world or something at the end of the film. So it's nothing, like, shocking that, like, you'll miss out on if, like, you don't see the movie. Like, you can't be really spoiled. From this film, like maybe like someone says, "Oh, El Diablo died," and people will just respond, "Oh, yeah, well, I kind of saw it coming." I mean, it's Suicide Squad; someone's gonna die. But anyway, there's my review of Suicide Squad. I give it an eight out of ten. It's a must see. If you're watching this spoiler part, you probably see it. In which case, I'm gonna go see it a second time because I loved it. So, yep, there's my review of Suicide Squad. If you uh, have a different opinion or thought I left something out that had to do with the film, just leave a comment. You know, let me know what you thought. If you did enjoy the review, leave a like, as always, with any of my content, and I will catch you all in the next video, so peace.